Okay, guys, get a lot of people um, kind of questioning our recommendation to stage the fuel pumps. What I mean by staging the fuel pumps, that means when you're running these big pumps, especially the big Walbro so-called 450s, in other words, we call them the TI-267 or 274 pumps, or even the 262 pumps, uh, we like to run one of them full-time, and then we bring the second pump or second and third pump on just when necessary. So why do we suggest this? Um, first of all, are you aware that each one of those pumps pulls over 200 watts of energy? In other words, it emits 200 watts of heat. Think about a light bulb, okay? That's a 200 watt light bulb sitting there and cooking away in your tank, and that's just one pump. So imagine if you have two pumps running like that or three pumps running like that. Well, you know, 600 watts of heat, um, I can boil a 55 gallon drum with that. What do you think is going to happen to your 15 gallon fuel tank? So it's not a it's not a good idea to do that. Um, I get the whining from people saying um, it's making the fuel system more complex. Sure it does, um, but did you know the GTR from the factory stages the second pump? Yeah, it just switches it on with a relay when it's needed, only when it's needed. So it's okay to do it, but you got to do it the right way. Talk to us if you need to know how to do it the right way. There's several different ways of doing it. Typically, we use a pressure switch, RPM switch, auxiliary output from a nitrous controller or aftermarket ECU or boost controller. All right, let's move along and talk about why you actually do this. Um, when you run two or three pumps, or more fuel, I should say, than what you really need to run full time, what ends up happening is it puts a more electrical load on your vehicle's system, electrical system, causing your alternator to wear out more quickly. Um, also puts other demands so it actually can actually slow down some of the other circuits on the car that are necessary for when you're making the full throttle pull. Um, it also makes your fuel filters process a whole lot more fuel than it doesn't need to. Um, and that's, that's the easy stuff. Now, when fuel pumps, or let's just say, um, any electric motor gets hot, the um, resistance on all those copper wires inside the motor goes up. In other words, the motor becomes less efficient. So the hotter the fuel pump warp gets, in other words, the hotter the fuel that it's running in, what ends up happening is the slower the pump runs. And what's even better is not only is it slower that it runs, but it also pulls even more current. Now, uh, aside from heating fuel, which as you know, it decreases the um, density of your fuel, which makes your fuel system even less effective, um, and then slowing down the fuel pumps, which again makes it less effective. Um, the fuel pump has brush and commutator inside of it. Until we get to the world of brushless world, we're going to have brushes and commutators. It's still the most reliable fuel pump system out there until the brushless comes out. Um, so what ends up happening is the more current the fuel pump pulls, the faster the brush and commutator wear. So the hotter the fuel gets, the faster it wears the brushes and commutator. Because, and at the same time, your pump's running slower. Let's compound it even further. The hotter the fuel gets, the softer your brush and commutator are, and so they wear even faster. So you, if you get what I'm saying, it's a snowball effect. It just tears up everything, and it makes your fuel system run like crap. So stage your fuel pumps, Eliminate the heat. Try to run your fuel as cool as possible. If you got to go on a long road trip, drive the car for an hour down the road. And if it's hot outside, fill it back up with gas. Okay? Keep those fuel pumps cool. They run way better. Now, let's talk about what happens with the E85. This aggravates it even worse. The hotter the fuel gets, the more it promotes condensation when you shut down your car, especially if you live in a humid environment. And we all know, or you should know if you're running E85, how bad condensation is for it. Um, not that's you can watch all the literature and YouTube videos on that that you want to. I just won't even talk about it. But it's a bad thing. Don't you don't want that to happen. Um, now let's talk about the chemical additives in the 85, the chemical effects of the 85 that everyone really freaks out about. A lot of people don't know this, but for every 10 degrees Celsius increase in temperature, the rate of chemical reaction doubles. For every 10 degrees Celsius, the chemical reaction rate doubles. So the more heat you're putting in your fuel system, the, you are creating an exponentially greater effect of the chemicals on all the components inside your fuel tank and your injectors and everything else in your fuel system. So it's a really bad thing. So that's really 
all the stuff you need to know and it should be very very compelling for you to say yeah it adds a little bit of complexity to my fuel system but that complexity when it's installed right and it's using the right components can make the fuel system far more reliable i hope that helps you guys out um you're always welcome to give us a call 727-258-4826 or check us out online www.4innovations.com